Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming here. Uh, my talk, I should admit, it has a little bit awkward name, but I will try to deliver the idea. And I will be talking a little bit about legacy code and uh, complexity today. So we asked, I'm, I am personally a software developer, and I, I guess some of you also uh, developers, and we write code and we deal with complexity every day. And most of us, we, we don't work in uh, greenfield projects. Most of us, we work with legacy code, with some systems that are maybe 10 years old, maybe 20 years old. And the legacy code, as Eric Evans mentioned, it's a good code for different reasons. And I have one very good uh, definition that I heard somewhere, that legacy code is the code that I don't understand. And I don't understand this code because it's complex and probably I didn't write it, right? And this complexity can be accidental or essential. And of course, since this is DDD conference, we usually talk about essential complexity, the complexity in our core domain. So domain-driven design helps a lot in this case, in domain-driven design about tackling complexity in our domain. And kind of implicit assumption that our system over time getting more and more and more complex because our business is growing, we add more and more features, and therefore we have more code and more complexity to deal with. And also Eric Evans mentioned yesterday in the keynote, we should be more brave in changing legacy systems. And what if I give you alternative? What if instead of applying DDD, we do something crazy? What if we start removing code and removing features? Because over time, if you look at period like 10 years, the business is changing significantly. The systems are changing significantly. What was built in years ago probably is not used today. Probably your users need diff, uh, other features today. Probably the business model changed. Probably the environment changed. There are some new technologies or some new services that you can use and use today. And I've seen it in my experience. I've been in one company that in three years changed from B to B to B to SMB and back to B2B in just three years. So B2B is like business to business. It's when you sell your service to some big enterprise. SMB is small to medium business. So they changed the strategy and decided to sell their services to small to medium businesses. That means that the average payment was much smaller and the usage was much smaller. And then later, maybe in a year or two, they they found, found out that actually that was not so good decision, so they kind of reverted the decision and went back to B2B. And that happens sometimes, that the business is changing direction significantly, and we as developers, we need to write a lot of code and maybe introduce a lot of features, and then suddenly these features are not used. This code is kind of just leaves there without any use. Another example that I've seen in my experience, when you have some old good product and then the management decides, now we need brand new shiny product. You spend time, you implement it, and then you start doing migration. But this migration doesn't happen in one day. Usually it's a very long process. If you have many customers, or maybe if you, if you have B2C software, let's say you have mobile applications, you support plenty of versions of Android or iOS, you will always have this long, long, long tail when a very few users will be still using some old features or old operation system and so on. And the same with browsers, basically. We have Internet Explorer as a famous example, and I guess very few people keep supporting Internet Explorer 6 nowadays. There are even some people who don't support Internet Explorer at all and say you need to have 
only Chrome or Firefox. So why I say sacrifice? Because it's kind of obvious, yes, if we remove features and code, the system will be simpler. But what is the sacrifice? The sacrifice can be different in different cases. It can be your revenue. It can be your happiness of your users. Because definitely, if you kill some feature, some users will be pissed off. Or the other aspect of this is psychological aspect. Imagine that you have a team in your company or some teammates, and they spend, I don't know, six months building something. They put a lot of effort there, a lot of energy. And then suddenly you come and say, you know what, this is not used, we need to kill it. Do you think they will be happy? Probably not. And this is also called sunk cost fallacy. And sunk cost is, I mean, people will talk a lot about sunk cost, but maybe don't explain it in a simple words. And I would try to quickly explain it. It's like, imagine you buy a ticket to cinema. You go to cinema and then you watch the movie. And then in 30 minutes, you see that this movie is just horrible. You just, you just don't want to continue watching. And now you need to make a decision. Do I sit in this cinema and waste another 90 minutes? Or do I need to leave right now and I kind of wasted money? And in any case, you already kind of paid. You need to pay. And this is kind of some cost. And a lot of people, they just cannot leave the, the theater. But be careful with killing features caught and sacrificing something because you can easily insult some people. You can, when you remove something where other people put a lot of energy, it's too easy to find enemies in this case. So you need to have good arguments. You need to prove that something should be removed or sacrificed. I would suggest you to use some metrics such as maybe Google Analytics, or maybe API uh, metrics, or maybe code complexity analysis, or maybe database performance metrics. There are many tools available on the market. And also, I would add that sacrifice is not really a technical decision. It should be a business decision. Because when it comes to losing some bit of revenue or losing some bit of uh, user happiness or I don't know, I'm not a business person, I don't know exactly how it's called, but when you need to do something and there will be consequences, business consequences, it's not your technical decision, it should be business decision, should be some product people or maybe even CEO who will say, okay, now it's time to kill this old product. And why we need to sacrifice? So we need to sacrifice something to reduce complexity. And why we need to do that is because when we try to build something new, it can be difficult to build on top of old and complex systems. So maybe it will be easier to simplify the system first, and then you can build on top of simpler, faster, and move on quicker. So please consider removing some features or some code when you build something new on, or when you try to improve something existent. Thank you very much.